The questions that we're going to be talking about are of profound importance, and it's my hope that the discussion tonight will be a significant step forward in each of your own personal spiritual journeys. Now, when we ask the question, scientific naturalism versus Christianity, we're asking which of these two worldviews is true. Accordingly, we must conduct our inquiry on the basis of the nine fundamental logical laws of reasoning. And we need to ask ourselves the two questions. First, what reasons are there to believe that scientific naturalism is true? And secondly, what reasons are there to believe that Christianity is true? Well, with respect to that first question, by scientific naturalism, I mean the view that the natural world is all there is and that we should only believe what can be scientifically proven. Now, think about the claim that the natural world is all there is. This claim is logically equivalent to atheism. But I can't even imagine how you could scientifically prove atheism. Since science only studies the natural world, how could science possibly prove that there is nothing beyond the natural world? The only way that the naturalist could hold this would be by faith. But then he would contradict his own view, which says that we should only believe what can be scientifically proven. And thus, his position seems to me to be internally incoherent. Now, consider that second claim, that we should only believe what can be scientifically proven. I submit that this claim is demonstrably false. First of all, it's too restrictive. There are all sorts of truths which we all rationally accept but which cannot be scientifically proven. For example, mathematical and logical truths, metaphysical truths like the external world is real, ethical truths, aesthetic truths, and even scientific truths. The fact is that science itself is permeated by unprovable assumptions. For example, the theory of relativity, one of the twin pillars of contemporary physics, is based on the assumption of the constancy of the speed of light between any two points, A and B. But this is strictly unprovable. Uh, we simply have to make this assumption if we're to hold to the theory. And thus, it is simply too restrictive to contend that uh, we should only believe what can be scientifically proven. But worse than that, the naturalist claim is self-refuting. For consider the statement, quote, we should only believe what can be scientifically proven, end quote. Can that statement be scientifically proven? Well, obviously not. And thus the scientific naturalist's position refutes itself, and so it cannot be true. And thus there seems to be no good reason to believe that the natural world is all there is, and there's certainly no good reason to believe that we should only believe what can be scientifically proven. In short, it's hard to see any good reason to think that scientific naturalism is true. So what about that second question? Are there any good reasons to think that Christianity is true? By Christianity, I mean the view that God exists and that he has revealed himself decisively in Jesus Christ. Now, I'd be the first to admit that you can't prove uh, compellingly these two claims, but I do think they can be shown to be reasonable, and in fact, more reasonable than their denials. Take that first claim that God exists. I believe that there are in the natural world certain signposts of transcendence, as it were, which point beyond the natural world to a greater reality as its ground. For example, signpost number one, the origin of the universe. The astrophysical evidence indicates that the universe began to exist in a great explosion called the Big Bang 15 billion years ago. Physical space and time were created in that event, as well as all the matter and energy in the universe. 
Therefore, as the Cambridge astronomer Fred Hoyle points out, the Big Bang theory requires the creation of the universe from literally nothing. Now, this tends to be very awkward for the naturalist. For as Anthony Kenney of Oxford University urges, a proponent of the Big Bang theory, at least if he is an atheist, must believe that the universe came from nothing and by nothing. But surely that doesn't make sense. Out of nothing, nothing comes. So why does the universe exist instead of just nothing? Where did it come from? There must have been a cause which brought the universe into being. And from the very nature of the case as the cause of space and time, this cause must be an uncaused, changeless, timeless, and immaterial being which created the universe. Isn't it incredible that the Big Bang Theory thus fits in with what the Christian theist has always believed, that in the beginning, God created the universe? Now, I simply put it to you. Which do you think is more plausible, that the Christian theist is right or that the universe just popped into being uncaused out of nothing? I at least don't have any trouble assessing these alternatives. Signpost number two, the complex order in the universe. During the last 30 years, scientists have discovered that the existence of intelligent life depends upon a complex and delicate balance of initial conditions simply given in the Big Bang itself. We now know that life-prohibiting universes are vastly more probable than any life-permitting universe like our own. How much more probable? Well, the answer is that the chances that the universe should be life-permitting are so infinitesimal as to be incomprehensible and incalculable. For example, Stephen Hawking has estimated that if the rate of the universe's expansion one second after the Big Bang had been smaller by even one part in a hundred thousand million million, then the universe would have recollapsed into a hot fireball. PCW Davies has calculated that the odds against the initial conditions of the universe being suitable for star formation without which planets could not exist is one followed by a thousand billion billion zeros at least. John Barrow and Frank Tipler estimate that a change in the strength of gravity or of the weak force by even one part in 10 to the 100th power would have prevented a life-permitting universe. There are around 50 such quantities and constants given in the Big Bang which must be fine-tuned in this way if the universe is to permit life. And it's not just each quantity which must be finely tuned. The ratios between these constants must also be exquisitely finely tuned. So improbability is multiplied by improbability by improbability until our minds are reeling in incomprehensible numbers. There is no physical reason why these constants and quantities should have the values they do. The one-time agnostic physicist Paul Davies comments, through my scientific work, I have come to believe more and more strongly that the physical universe is put together with an ingenuity so astonishing that I cannot accept it merely as a brute fact. Similarly, Fred Hoyle remarks, a common sense interpretation of the facts suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with physics. And Robert Jastrow, the head of NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies, calls this the most powerful evidence for the existence of God ever to come out of science. So once again, the view that Christian theists have always held that there is a designer of the universe seems far more plausible than the atheistic view that the universe, when it popped into existence, uncaused, out of nothing, just happened to be, by chance, fine-tuned for intelligent life with an incomprehensible 